so you have to learn about your own uh, your own ethics your own uh, kind of stuff to that thing uh, okay now now second policies understand these are the things which are going to be an important principles for this nep one is you have to respect your local environment that means from 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 the ecosystem where you have been brought it's not that you have to only talk about uh, say in our uh, early education system we we talk too much of uh, about the british history too we too much of mogal history i hope you guys got it now this education policy where we are going to talk about our history we are going to talk about our origin right we should know where we start so it is about our things number one number two equity and inclusion to become the correctness of all educational decisions you cannot have a differentiation in an education system like you know at at one end uh, this is uh, is is system and this is low is system already we have those kind of an differentiation in our own system let us take in our school education we have cbse icse state board metric nos i hope okay so there are various categories over there that, that should be included that should not be any differentiation should be shown in in this education system that's it number 2 number 3 community participation the idea of education is to include the community uplift the community around you when i say community it can be any any thing you know it, can, it should be you, you have to give back to your society it should focus on that one uh, early systems we don't give much importance on this kind of a stuff we talk only about the professional education we talk about the career oriented all kind of stuff we don't bother about this kind of an a uh, community uh, you know inclusion of the community it will be the form of uh, community, private community participation etc then comes the fourth principle obviously we already been in the track we already been in the track uh, thanks to covid thanks to corona because if uh, covid is not there still coming to this kind of a uh, techno using technology in education we will be <coughs> using it uh, Uh, in uh, 2025 but today we started we are just started this process much much earlier thanks to covid we started using our technology we are sitting at home moving around going in the, going in our own place wherever we are we started using the technology into the classroom not in only the classroom the technology the teaching process apart from online we have other technologies is to is to do i don't know how many of you heard about this uh, apart from i'm not talking alone, uh, alone about the online education alone there is a kind of a, uh, a technology some kind of a virtual learning uh, visual learning augmented learning all kind of uh, things are coming up now emphasis on uh, understanding your learning process what is that emphasis understanding that i i i most of you will be will, will understand this today uh, today's system focuses on examination we focus we are more concerned about examination the marks scores grades or cgp every everything we are focused on that whether you understand it or not that's a big question mark so here that that's a, that's an important thing they hereafter this nep is going to focus on understanding process so not about a simply a rote learning like you know going and uh, taking an examination and getting the mark that's not going to help you at all now uh unique uh, capabilities you know something like recognizing and tapping them in each student that's that's really an interesting thing is going to happen because uh, in every class the teachers uh, uh, used to categorize the entire class into three categories one is the front benches the toppers uh, they they are the toppers they are the, the rank holders university rank holders and there will be a bunch of you know uh, middle uh, row students will be there they they consider to be a kind of an average category you know they are all uh, they they can uh, they can pass and then they can uh, fl flourish they give a majority of the results will be there and there will be a last bench i'm just giving a, 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 a broad view but the system the new education system says every student have some kind of a capability 
the institution's role when i say institutions including the teachers role is to identify the capacity in each and every student doesn't matter it should be an academic performance it can be anything it can be even even it can be an art drama uh, or a kind of an uh, creating something you know any any it can be anything sports games like anything identify the capacity of that uh, student and build the capacity today that's going to be a top of the uh, process you know what we call it as a capacity building today we conduct a lot of programs on that build the capacity it doesn't matter you you fail in mathematics no problem at all if you are good in sports if you are good in artwork if you are good in craft if you are good in even if you are good in you know you know singing dancing doesn't matter you will be identified you will be groomed in that particular area you got it so that's a unique capability should be identified recognizing and then you have to narrate on that <clears throat> now then comes an important part of your nep critical thinking and creativity what is a critical thinking critical thinking it's not what is already been thought it's not what the teacher says and you have to uh, you have to just follow critical thinking is you have to ask this question on the question uh, let me put in this way everybody used to answer question, to answer to the question right every teacher comes to a class the students will answer the teacher will ask a question and the students will answer the question now the critical thinking uh, uh, you develops a, a kind of an ecosystem you have to question the question why why if the, if somebody up answer uh, come out with a question it's about you to ask the question you have to question the question why again why 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 so you come you will get into a process called design thinking right that's how it leads to a critical thinking when the critical thinking goes when the critical thinking is invoked in an individual that creates a creativity capability that boosts the logical decision making and so on so that is our seventh principle the last one is whatever you do it has to be reviewed everything that should be a continuous review and sustainable on each and by, by by it should be reviewed by the experts it's not that you teach at alone reviews it's not out to review to by only by your own uh, institution it has to be reviewed by the expert team today we have used to have a review team for every education system faculties will uh, understand the review system we talk, talk about in the nac nba all kind of review system here every single component what you focus all the six seven principles it has to be reviewed that's where eight principle everything will have to have a continuous and sustainable review so you focus more on research activities with the research and regular assessment of this uh, these activities through educational experts so that's what uh, the eight principles of this nep the entire document is is been is been you know talking about this eight principles i am i going to move on to the next uh, slide I, i just want to respond whether can you able to hear me properly or uh, let me move on to the yes sir fine good now here as i said before this is the, the the eight principles what i told you it is all about nep i am not going to talk more about nep at all because uh, that's already there and uh, you, it's not going to help you at all by giving more information about the nep but what is important is what impact it's going to have in your higher education you are not going to bother about school education but let me tell you one thing nep talks more 80% of nep nep is a documentation is about school education you guy you people already moved on to that uh, moved who uh, moved out of that school uh, education now you guys are there in an college education maybe it is an higher education put again under education how it going to affect you or system the major reforms of higher education are what is been expected out of it 50% gross enrollment ratio by 2035 right now we are in 2020 21 next and in after next 15 years your gross enrollment for higher education should be increased by 50% what it means it means to say everybody come out of every 100 people complete the school education 50 people should go for higher education 
but today it's not so. Let's take a simple example. Take our, our own city itself. In our city, altogether, how, you know, how many colleges we used to have, uh, whether it is in uh, government, self-finance college, or men, women college, all kind of stuff, how many colleges we have? We might have 50 colleges. Good. Now, think in the ratio about the number of schools in that city and the college. We have more than 5,000 schools in the city. When I say city is Chennai alone, but we have various streams, CBSC, ICIC, state board, government schools, 5,000 schools plus we have in the city limit. But what about the college ratio? I'm talking about the metropolitan city. They think in the terms of a rural area uh, or Mafsal area where the ratio is much worse. So here the higher education, uh, uh, in higher, the major reform, what they were expecting is 50% should be uh, should enroll in 2035. So, in two, so what it tells it in the next 15 years, think about the number of colleges. In case if it is 5,000 schools, I mean to say, you know, how many, how many number of colleges it has to be, uh, we have, we should have in the city alone. It's going to be not less than 1,000. Right now it is only 50. Think about the number of colleges which going to, that we are going to see in near future. In the next 15 years, it's going to be have tenfolds, not minimum tenfolds of uh, uh, colleges what we already have. The good news for teachers, we are going to have enormous amount of uh, teaching opportunities. So teaching, you know, uh, jobs are going to come up. But what? Next important thing, all the holistic and multidisciplinary education, that is flexibility of subjects is going to be there. Let me tell you girls, you the people are, you are doing your MCOM in a, in a, in a Madras University system. And let me tell you, in future, in, in near future, all this going to, system is going to vanish. You are not going to, you, you people, and that's when I say you, uh, this UG system is not going to have, be there. You are going to have a UG in a different form. UG program is going to have three years as well as four years. Same BCom. You guys, you people are from BCom. Three years BCom and four years BCom. What, you, what, you, what kind of difference you're going to have three and four years? Three year BCom. Suppose you want to complete your UG and want to go to a job, you finish three year and you can go, uh, you can go back. You will be provided a degree of BCom. If it is four year, you add one more year, third three year plus one year of research, then you get an UG program, four year BG program. Your four year BG program only will be eligible to do a PG program. You got it? You are not uh, going to, uh, with your three year PG, you are not going to join your PG program. You are not eligible. Okay, people, I have my uh, three-year program. I decide I go for a job. Then I decided to do my PG. What to do? Come back to college, join the UG again, complete that one-year research program, which is, which is like an honest program, complete it. Then now you are eligible for a PG program. You got it? So PG program is going to be, uh, the, which, which is going to have a one-year. Then now comes the third, uh, third reform in higher education is, it is an integrated five-year bachelor's or master's. In the sense, a person wants to do an MSc, MCOM. So after finishing his 12th, uh, the student decided, anyway, I want to do an M MCOM or MSc. No problem. You directly join in the integrated program, where it is a five-year uh, bachelor master degree program. Five years continuously can learn. But let me tell you in this case, in between you decided, oh my God, I, it's, I, it's not my cup of tea. I don't want to continue my education. It's five years, it's too much. I don't want to do that. I want to discontinue. You are welcome to do that. Even at one first year, if you want to discontinue, you can go. <coughs> but you will be going with a certificate, one year certificate. Two year, you'll be given a diploma. Three year, You'll be giving a degree. You'll be giving a degree. Fourth year, you'll be giving. You'll give a four-year degree. And if you have completed all the five year, you'll be given a five-year degree. 
Now, what's the big thing on it? The big deal is after getting a diploma, you just move on, you work, you go to a job, you work, you get some experience, then you decide that, okay, I want to do my, uh, I will continue my degree. You are welcome to come back. You can start from where you stopped. You got it? It's such a going to be a flexible form where people, any time they can go out, any time they can come in. That's what we call it as multiple entry and exit. There is no, not going to be any stipulated uh, period like compulsory you have to be here for three years. No, it's not going to happen. Then there is one more uh, announcement <coughs> already UGC also mentioned, but it is uh, mandatory in this NAP program, MPhil uh, degree, which is going to be uh, discontinued. Now, what is the purpose of the MPhil degree? The UGC started this MPhil degree. It is an, it is an, uh, an a first step towards the research. So people want to do PhD, they have to do MPhil, then they have to go to PhD. No. Now it has completely changed. If you want to do research, do research directly. Why do you need to do a pro intermediate pros and waste your time over there? So do a research. There, there are higher education universities focused on direct research program. Even there is an integrated research program like, you know, MSc PhD. After completion, completing a four-year uh, research degree, I mean a degree, UG degree, you can directly go to uh, uh, join a PhD program. That is an integrated PhD program, masters as well as PhD. That is going to be there. So all these things are, are, are a breakup in the higher education form. I'm focusing on higher education. I'm not going to touch anything about the school education because that's not your area. Then comes very, very interesting thing for you guys is credit transfer an academic bank of credits <coughs> what do you mean by credit transfer listen here i do a course in a in, in, in university okay i do a course in university uh in one university i move on to some other place i can use that credit what i uh, what i scored there and you can transfer to this university this is inter this inter university. Even in the same university, I, 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 I being a Mac student, I want to learn about the financial management. No problem. You take do a course on financial management. This is so very interesting. You do a course on financial management because you love it. But you can transfer that credit to your core course mathematics. You got it. Being a mathematics student, I can do a financial management course. Being a physics student, I can do a programming course. You can in include that into your uh, uh, credit transfer system in your mainstream. That's what we call it. It's an academic bank of credits. You, you Whatever you want, you just do a, your program courses, and then that will be stored in your academic bank of credits. Any point of time, you can take it, consolidate it, apply it to a certain university, get a degree or a diploma. Nice, right? <clears throat> That means you can do that. You have a choice of what you want to learn. Today, you don't have it. You have to take an object. Say, in, <coughs> even today, you must talk about elective courses. Today, uh, no, elective courses or on optional courses, not your option. The university will give an option. You have to choose among that option. But here, it's your completely, uh, it's your option. You have to select your own thing. You select whatever you want. Not necessary issue from the same stream. That's what we say, multi-stream. Multi-stream universities. Uh, uh, the, this particular uh, NEP focus on developing those model multidisciplinary education research universities. Apart from those universities we are at grad, uh, we're giving you know, uh, degrees alone. We are going to build up a lot of multidisciplinary ed ed education universities. I'm going to give you some of the examples which has already been done. In, 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 in India, a lot of experiments have been already done in a private sector, not in a, in a, in a government sector. In private uh, sector, a lot of experiments are there, a lot of private universities have come. And they started, you know, uh, going with this multidisciplinary education research university. I'm going to give you some of the examples over here in the next coming slides. So this is what has been going to happen in the higher education. This is what I've been expecting. Now, I move on to the next slide. This is about to what? 
so uh, here as i told you before it's uh, we are going to talk about all the uh, all the questions we are going to ask questions and we are going to get answers from this uh, from this question first thing is what what is nep and uh, what uh, what kind of a stuff it's going to happen in the future now it's a question for it's a time for why why nep okay yeah. why why we need change we might ask uh, it's a, it's a general uh, thing why what is the need for uh, going for a change yes there is a need for a change because let me tell you one thing uh, you are been learning the same kind of uh, uh, stuff what your father has learned what their father has learned for the almost for two generations you people are learning the same stuff in the same way for the uh, for for for, for, for the past uh, uh, 20 25 years there is a need for change it's an urgent need for change because we live in a society we live in an atmosphere where we we face a different kind of a problem a different kind of you know, you know uh, ecosystem which was completely different from from your grandfather's uh, time from your father's time simple example okay uh, let me go with a couple of slides and then i'll give you that example okay this is an evolution of uh, nep's you know the nep has started in early uh, uh, you know uh, uh, 48 uh, once the like, uh, india got independence and Nehru government uh, started this nep program and then uh, we as almost we are uh, there in 60 70 years are born uh, it's only three times or four times it has been completely changed the other i don't go with this uh, numbers over here because it's all more slight modification has been done with the early NEP. you know what the major change which has made in the uh, last few uh, last NEP is the year is 1986 what you people are learning now the, the education policy uh, which was framed in the year 1986 of course in 1992 uh, they made some modification in that but still you have been following the system which was there in 1986 framed in 1986 uh, almost uh, 30 years 30 plus years we have been following a system a uh, lot of things have changed around us but we'll still be alert that is a major drawback in an in a, in, a, in a national growth it reflects in the economic uh, growth of the country also so that is a need let's take an example of your mobile phone if you buy a mobile phone within two years and I'm, I'm giving a bigger uh, range two years you say it is uh, absolute but think about the life change it's a gadget for the gadget itself you say you are saying it's an outdated but for a life-changing process of education you are so absolute you are doing and you are learning those things not only i'm not talking about the syllabus let me tell you one thing i'm talking about the system itself system or oh, syllabus will change you know our university will change the syllabus once in three years or five years uh, if you see in, de in detail if you see not much will be changed only the you know subject board will be changed other 50 percent of the content will be the remain the same but uh, uh, that's not going to uh, that's not going to help us at all right now we are in a situation where we are we are facing the problems which was never ever faced before and uh, we know how to solve those problems which was already known but today we are facing a lot of problems either whether it is an economical human social financial anything we come across with problems the problems are so fresh but we are equipped with the solutions with where the problems are already solved that's what happened right so here there is a need why yes at least now better late than never there is a need for a change that's why we are supposed to go to NAP and move on now there's a list of things uh, it's there by given by the NAP I'm not going to go in detail all those things 
I'll just take pick one or two because uh, uh, I just want to spend a lot of time on the coming slides. Here. As I told you, holistic multiplayer education, restructuring of your UG and uh, PG degrees, multidisciplinary education, research universities, rationalized and institutional architectures, National Research Foundation. Today, uh, we talk about research. The research in the sense, you know, I, I, let me tell you, research today, the universities are producing a lot of PhDs. I'm sorry to say uh, it's all cut and paste work. And the people who produce solutions, their problem is not there, our problem is already solved. So here, there is a need for real research work where you have to identify the problem which is going to come in future, not the problem which is already there. So that kind of a research, the people are thinking about it. And one important thing that we are going to discuss in coming slides is about open and distance learning uh, programs that university has opened up. That's what's an interesting move. I'm going to talk about uh, that one a uh, little bit uh, in a lengthy way. Then you are uh, uh, regulatory bodies. So regulatory body, uh, according to our, uh, our UG program, what is your regulatory body? You have been governed by university and universities are governed by NACs uh, and NBA for quality improvement, all kind of regulatory bodies. Uh, what is that? Day? Now, all these things are going to revamp that they are going to put everything under, under one umbrella. That, uh, that is a regulatory body. The teacher education is going to go for a major change. I'm not going to talk here about that. Now, what is important for you is technology in education. Your education is going to go with the technology. Don't always think technology is about having a smart classroom. No, it is not about smart classroom alone. Smart classroom is one part of the technology we have quite a number of uh, no, technology uh, in uh, educational technologies are there. Today, there is some kind of an augmented reality. What is an augmented reality? Augmented reality is you bring those uh, uh, no, things into your classroom. Uh, you would have seen some kind of what's of uh, uh, no, uh, sharing where uh, a teacher at Kerala brought uh, uh, an elephant into a classroom. A galaxy system to the classroom. People understand instead of going for a picture in a, in the, the geography or history book, they can see it and they, they can feel an experience. Virtual reality. Put all those things in your virtual regard by Google and then try to experience that. So those things of uh, technology. Adult education is going to play an important role where in future, that is, in uh, they are having a planning of 2030, every person, whether it is an adult or a college girl, so youth, everybody should be literate. I'm not talking about, you know, they are going to get their degree there. I'm not talking about that kind of literacy. They should be able to read and write. But, uh, but very pathetic situation. Still, there are, uh, there are many uh, clusters are there where people are not able to read and write properly. Then comes important thing that also I'm going to spend some time promotion of Indian languages. Your medium of instruction is still English. But what is really required is a medium of language should be there in their own mother language, native language. Why? That's very, very important thing because. That the level of understanding is going to be different, uh, completely different when it comes to con comes to by learning in your native language. Then comes investing. Today we talk about investing in a in a real estate, investing in a in a, a in a gold, in share market. But in education system, government have a complete plan of investing in for the future education because. They are, they are the future generation people. They are going to build up the nation. With that, I'll move on to the next slide. So here, um, about uh, I'll, as I told you uh, about your uh, <coughs> Indian languages. Promotion of Indian languages, art and culture. I'm not going to detail of all the stuff. Uh, let me tell you one single example for Indian language. Today, we use uh, your modem of language as English. But you might be belong to uh, a, a Tamil speaking uh, community or a Telugu speaking community or a Gujarati people will be there. Think when you taught that process, taught that topic, whatever the subject you've been taught in your own language, the level of understanding will be more. Uh, parallelly, the language will also be developed. 
that particular language will also will be developed i don't know how many of you understand what i'm trying to say this is slowly getting uh, it took at anna university from this year they are going to start uh, they are going to start the courses on the native language you never ever heard about it it's going to be like you know mechanical engineering in tamil uh, in tamil computer science in tamil it's a, it's a major uh, change paradigm shift in that the purpose is people should understand it at i'll just give you a notation of that so process whatever you learn say le let us take an example you read <coughs> or you or you know, or you listen to your lecture in which language you are going to do that you are going to listen it in english obviously when you come to an exam you are going to write it write it in your know, exam again in english right you are reading process going to be in english writing process is going to be in english but what about the real process you know you are thinking understanding process do you think that that's going to be in in english no you are reading or listening can be in english writing writing obviously are there in english but when when it comes to your understanding process understanding process will happen only in your native language whether it's tamil telugu malayalam hindi it doesn't matter it's going to happen only in your own language so the the, the system desire decides to even the mode of instruction itself can be in your own language english is a medium of communication that's all it's not the, it's not the subject so that is why Uh, NEP focuses on going into uh, Indian language promotion of Indian languages by the delivery method. An university started this year where they are going to come out with uh, uh, with their own language. So Almond, uh, I don't know whether uh, I, I, I thought of you know sharing a uh, YouTube. Uh, uh, let me click it on. See, sir. Tell me whether you can able to uh, hear the audio. Uh, okay. Someone sir. can, you uh, know, check it. Can you able to see the browser which is open now? Yes, sir. Okay. Now let me put it. This is one uh, uh, topic. Uh, it's my own uh, video on video channel. It's about uh, micro economics and still micro economics. Loading. Still loading. Yes, sir. Can, can you able to? Uh, it's open now. Can you? Can you able to see it? No, sir. Not able to see it. No, still it's opening. No, okay. No, it's I'm open now. I, I, I'm able to see that uh, visuals. Sir, we can only see the link which is displayed. Sir. Not able to hear the voice. Hear the voice. The sir. link is seen. Sir. It's not there, na? Okay, I will do one thing. I will just give that. I'm not able to hear, no. Sir, we couldn't able to see too. We can just see that link alone. Okay, okay. So it's not been uh, displayed here. Yeah? Okay, I will. I will do that. Okay. Uh, it's better. I'll just uh, give the link by.
Okay, uh, I think it's not visible. No, you can see only the PPT. No, you cannot see the. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, now what I will do is for your understanding purpose, I'll just give the link over here. At later stage, you can see, see that. I'll just give you an uh, explanation what exactly it means. Sir. Okay, sir. Now, can you able to see the PPT or the, even that also closed? So, we can able to see the PPT, sir. Fine. Yeah. PPT is there in the presentation mode? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, uh, I will share it at the later end. You know, this is a YouTube channel where every subject we moved with a different, we, we are produced with a different uh, you know, languages. Let's, uh, let's take an example. What I'm trying to show you is, is a kind of a uh, topic that describes what is the difference between a microeconomics and a macroeconomics. Here, the same content which was been elaborated in Hindi, English, Tamil, Malayalam, etc. So the students, you know, they want to want to understand in their own language, in the native language, they can open in their own language uh, version and then they can see. So that's an idea behind the, the promoting these languages in the native uh, structure. So the idea is to, at the end of the day, the people should understand the concept in their own way. We'll move on to the next slide. Okay. Uh, can you able to see the slide which has changed now? Yes, sir. Now, here moves on to the next uh, why. What is the reason? One is producing, getting into the language. The second one is quality. Today, quality of research, academic research especially. Let me give you, an. I just already told you that the quality of the academic research is too bad in our, our country. Every universities are becoming as, uh, you know, a PhD producing uh, uh, factory. Every department in the university are there have their own targets to produce a number of PhDs. Every semester, if, if they have a target this year, how many PhDs are going to produce? It's like a, a sales target. The, the quality of the content has gone near, very near it has uh, been, uh, 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 it was a phase in what the quality needs. So how to do that? Uh, what to do that? So here, NEP establishes a separate body, National uh, uh, Research Foundation, and it's they're going to have a stagnant uh, process of uh, getting getting into uh, uh, no research, the core research. Um, today, of course, we have a lot of you know metrics, something like you know when you want to publish a paper, it should be that type of an impact factor, all kind of stuff. But you know what happens to be very frank. Uh, Today, uh, the research has become as a kind of a uh, business model where uh, people have started having their own model for publishing the content in the journal, doing the research, collecting the data. You know, it, the outsourcing has started, uh, started getting into this research area. So this, uh, they are going to stringently uh, uh, focus on this area, make sure that you give only the quality researchers. 
not uh, no, the namesake researchers will be affected. So I'll move on to this. Uh, that's what I just because as of now I'm not going to go detail about the, uh, uh, the research for new people because uh, you know you need some time to get into the research activities. Um, now here I'm going to talk about that. Uh, sort of thing. Uh, reimagining vocational education. Apart from your regular academic, uh, you know, development. The NEP focuses more on the you know, vocational education. Vocational education was uh, so popular in 80s and 90s. After that, you know, people uh, started losing their uh, interest in this vocational education. Vocational education in the in the means that they used to. I don't know how many of you heard about uh, ITIs, industrial training institutes. Government has a lot of set up a lot of ideas across the country. But over the period of time, these ITAs are being closed because of people are not shown interest to joining these ITAs. That is the reason today we're not able to get those skilled uh, no, technicians when it comes to electricians, plumbers, mechanics, uh, no fitters, uh, no welders. We don't have a, a quality people in this area. It's a complete demand. You know, you can get the computer programmers, but it's very, very difficult to, for you to get an AC mechanic. I'm talking about the real good AC mechanic. You know, people or everybody who you 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 started using the screwdriver that became as mechanics at later stage. So now the vocational education is coming up. They are going to focus on vocational education. Now you might ask, how it's going to uh, uh, how it's going to help this normal education stream? You know what? They are going to merge these two things: vocational education with an academic. People who do regular courses can take up the vocational education as a stream. As I told you before, you can transfer the credit back to your uh, mainstream. Doing an occasional course, get the credit and transfer to your mainstream, you can become a skilled technician in addition to your degree, code degree. Now, the question is we saw about uh, what, why. Now, the question is uh, it's about how, how is going to be implemented. Quickly, I just go through this how process. The policy is released. First, let me tell you how they designed this. How do, how do, how do they uh, design the entire 220 uh, draft? It's not that uh, people sitting at their own offices and then they think about it, coming out with a research article. No, all these things are framed based upon the following things. Field experiences, factual research, feedback from those stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders of these, um, these uh, graduates? These employees, I mean, these uh, these people who are coming out of the universities, the companies, no, they get the information from the companies. What kind of employee you really required? Get those feedback from those stakeholders. Lesson learned from best practices. There are a lot of model universities that they they do a lot of experience experiments. Uh, get those uh, uh, no, feedbacks from those best practices. Put together, then your draft has been drafted. The draft has a big history. It's not that being done within a year. They have been drafting it for six years. Now, 18, 20, 2019, they're given the draft for, uh, for, for the discussion, debated, made a lot of changes, and now it has started getting implemented. Now comes how it's going to be implemented. Man, this is the, it's going to be the structure. You know what? The entire school system, the, right, they are starting from the foundation. The entire school system starts from preschool plus grades one to two. So five years, five, then three years, then three years, and then two years. Got it? Sorry. Uh, it, it is about uh, five, five plus three plus three plus four. At secondary level, it's going to be 9, 10, 11, 12 standards going to be considered as a secondary education. And middle, 
six, seven, eight. That's already there in the middle. Um, uh, Pre-preparatory level is three, four, five, and the foundation is one and two. Let's compare with the old system now. The existing academic structure is about two years, uh, ten years back. Ten years of education, which starts from your age six uh, uh, to sixteen. That is uh, six to sixteen, where you will be uh, start. You will be uh, gone to your first standard to your uh, tenth standard. Then you do your eleventh and twelfth. That's two years. Now the new system. They have three slabs here. Foundation. Foundation stage five. It's a multi-level. It should be a play and activity based. No books, no nothing. It's completely a, a kind of a kindergarten stuff. They are going to do for the five for for five first five years. They are going to do that one. Then the second level. Again, it's going to have a kind of um, uh, preparatory stage. Your discovery method, you no, know, all kind of exam. In the middle, at the school level, they are going to focus more on mathematics, art, social, and humanities, which is already there. But the methodology is going to differ. I'm going to talk about that also. Then comes your second stage, where till ninth to twelfth standard. As of now, it is only eleventh uh, and twelfth. Today, they are, they are going to have four year of a secondary education. And that too of a multidisciplinary, not like what we have been doing right now. Even at the multi secondary stage, they are going to inc incorporate the vocational education. Initially, we used to have today all, almost every school focus only whether it is a science stream or a commerce stream. If you go back in 90s and 80s, in school level, they used to have vocational education. They used to have you know, general stream. A lot of vocational education was being given over there. General mechanics is one of the courses. You now, the people used to go for physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, and there is one people, one set of people take general mechanics. People who do the general mechanics will be entering into the polytechnics at the later stage. All those I don't know, things are gone because the, 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 the trend has moved towards only an education and medical education in the past. That is that starts the disaster. Now, next one to the next slide. Here, there are different streams where they existing and academic. I'm just going to quickly go into that one. 10 plus 2 plus 3. You know what it is? 10 plus 2 plus 3, it's your education structure. Today it is 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. Your board exams based on the memorizing facts. What do you mean by that? I hope uh, there are people who are born and brought up with the corner guides. Even at at a, at a, at a uh, no college level, <coughs> I used to see people run towards the moon market and the bookstores and uh, uh, and then they get this uh, no question marks because they always know they, they we have a formula no five years question you take this past five year question definitely you can pass the exam but uh, they are moving into the next level. Let me tell you uh, one thing. I don't know how many of you heard about the word plagiarism. Maybe uh, the teach faculties will, will know because they, when they go for research, they have been uh, focusing on the plagiarism, checking, make sure that the content which is not already published, right? Now, uh, you know, the system says, the new e education policy system says the plagiarism should be uh, for the questions itself. In future, when the complete plan has been rolled out, you can't ask the same question next time. Every time you have to reframe the question. And they're given the guidelines also how to design, how to develop, how to create questions. You should not ask why, what, when, all kind of you know, memory uh, retention questions should not be there. Only analytical kind of a question should come. Creativity. Uh, invoking creativity questions, invoking discovery-based questions should be asked. Then uh, let's come to this uh, award of the degree. <coughs> award of the degree, completion of three or four years, the degree will be provided to the students. If it is arts stream, arts and science stream, three years, your BSc, BCA, BBA or BCom stuff. If it's an engineering, it was four years. That's what the, the early stage says. But in, in, in the new system, it's going to be a multiple exit option. So even at one year, you can come out of your college with a, with a certificate. Two years, 
you can come out of your institution with a diploma, three years with a degree, four years with a degree, with a research certificate, five years with a master's. <coughs> then, as I told you before, vocational education, it was there early in early, so slowly it has disappeared. Now they are going to bring the vocational education system right from your class six, not at the higher education. Right from the class six, they are going to develop this vocational education. And marking scoring, no marking system as we've been done so far. It's going to be like a 360 degree performance evaluation. Not only about to, at the end of the term, you write your exam and get your marks. No, every single day what you do, that will be assessed, that will be taken care of and then completed. Initially, you used to have multiple entrance tests. <coughs> like, let me tell you one thing. Suppose you go for an uh, engineering, you go for JE. If same thing, you want to go for an analysis, you go for a different entrance test. But it's going to be a common entrance test. With that score, you can apply for it. So that's going to be uh, how it has been going to be uh, you know, structured in this uh, new system. Uh, we talked about multiple entry and multiple exit a lot. So I just move on to the, uh, come out of the slide. And now let's go into um, the next topic of who and whom. Uh, I, I will have a small uh, interruption here. How much time we have left, madam? I think I crossed the time also. Uh, madam, how much time I can take? So that and I can plan accordingly. Yes, sir, a maximum of uh, 10 to 15 minutes, sir. It's already is it, uh, 4 uh, 20. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. So I just may take the next five minutes. I will try to wind up and then we'll go for question answers. Ah, sure. Now, whom it's going to apply? It? Um, student activity and participant uh, participation, whoever it may be. The plenty of opportunities will be given for these uh, uh, students. With you know, with a kind of uh, having different capacities, it can be sports, culture, arts, ecosystem, etc. Every education institution should going to have a separate counseling system for handling the stress and emotional adjustment. That's going to be a biggest task for the next generation institutions. Increasing hostel facilities because that's going to be a lot of residential institutions. You no know? excellent uh, institution for excellent residential institution is going to come up. And internal medical facility, they are going to have focus more on the health issues, you know, uh, addressing those health issues for the students. Optimal learning environment and the support for the student. Uh, it's going to be a high level. You are, you are uh, libraries, not going to be a libraries of uh, today. It's going to be like a library of, uh, uh, li it's going to become as a resource centers, not only books. You're going to get a lot of information from the library. Uh, technology enabled library is going to be there. And of course, they are going to go, move on to the ODL. ODL, next slide, I'll show you some of the information about the ODL online. Now, uh, let's take an example of ODL. ODL is today, the, the system has permitted you to go for a ODL. What is the ODL? Open and distant learning. People used to remember those uh, correspondent courses, you no know, distance education courses. Madras University were given a lot of uh, degrees through distance education, even MBA, MCA, B BBA, BCom, all those stuff. And they have already always they have a secondary, you know, uh, uh, secondary treatment uh, when it comes to job industry. Now here the new system says ODL is equivalently treated as a regular degrees. It's not the traditional ODL uh, distance education system. It is about uh, open learning in the sense flexible, learn anywhere, anytime. It's not that one particular Saturday or Sunday go to the uh, exam, I mean, uh, the university, uh, so study center, go there, learn. No, it's going to be a digital learning. Anywhere, anytime you can learn it. Credit transfer will be happen. So people prefer to go to a job and then we'll be doing ODL. And one interestingly, people who already do their open co or regular course will also enroll for ODL course and then do it parallelly because that, that has been allowed today. First, people who, who do a regular course can also do a, a second degree. Dual degrees are being uh, allowed now. 
initially it was not allowed say for example a, P, a person wants to uh, do, wants to doing an engineering they want to do an economics uh, degree ma enroll for an odl course and then you can do an ma in economics let's take an example a typical example starts from the big the blue iit madras has started this program very first a person to initiate this odl method as per the nep norms today iit getting into iit was a dream that iit itself came out of the odl method where bsc degree in a data science a degree in programming and data science has been uh, started successfully we are they are moving into second year you know what i i'll give you a statistic of that particular degree the first year 80% of students are not uh, uh, fresh students you no know, after school uh, schooling is completed i uh, let me tell you one more interesting stat there was a student uh, uh, around 56 years one person is taking up the course 56 and there are a lot of engineering students who are doing engineering in the private universities they enroll for this course parallelly many students many 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 i i uh, many students from industry many many professionals from industry are enrolled for this course they are already equipped they are already professional but still they enroll for this course a ba for the bsc degree it's going to be flexible we'll move on to the next one i'll give you another example it's not only iit lot of other people started their own odl programs and now it became started one particular platform they started giving Oh, I'll show you one platform here. Great learnings. Maybe you would have seen a lot of advertisement in the television. A lot of foreign universities had come out to come out to this particular platform to give their courses. You can go and enroll. <coughs> not only that, I'm not going to promote all these things, but still, you have some other thing called Coursera. A uh, lot of a lot of you know universities are tie up. They put their courses on the Coursera. People can do their uh, enroll the courses and complete them. <laughs> I'll move on to the couple of slides quickly and then finish it up. Here, the deserving students—they are definitely—they are going to get their scholarships. A lot of financial support is going to be given because everything will be monitored directly with the dashboard. Uh, they, they are going to have a dashboard of system. Anybody can go there and enter. Just like that, you have the Tarogya's uh, app. similarly nep has come out with a dashboard where for higher education for every scst obc and other uh, uh, no uh, qualified people can go there and enter the detail their financial support will be taken care and monitored that may not be any uh, intermediate you should be there and where <coughs> where it is being implemented uh, as i told you implementation should be done it will going to be done in your board exam the curriculum lessons regulation and a uh, primary education multilingual that is different languages assessment reforms and online education every in 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 a nairage higher education platform every cluster it's going to be implemented okay all the things i just i just a lot of time i'll move on to the important things i just want to show you some examples where they it has been already implemented the important part here is the key shift is that students will have increased flexibility and choice of subject the policy has stated that there will be no rigid separation between arts and science hereafter that's nothing called arts and science people used to say i am we are come from from arts uh, arts background like you know bcom ba etc people used to say we are from bsc mathematics you know uh, chemistry physics that not they, hereafter there is nothing called arts and science both is going they are going to merge both i'm going to show you some of the example the universities which already started this uh, you know amalgamation that should not be there's going to be not any difference between a curricular and extra curricular activities you know what curricular always that go with an academic oriented extra curricular it goes with the other uh, research and activities go for some kind of a symposium all kind of stuff both not going to be separate it's going to be included together and vocational academic streams are going to amalgamate so as of now we people focus only on certain you know specialty teams in in, in a new system all those things going to be clubbed together i'm going to see you some of the interesting examples you never ever thought of this kind of a degrees in your in in your lifetime let's take an example over here 
How many of you seen this example here? Shiv Nadar universities, I just picked there some examples from the Shiv Nadar university to make you to understand, okay, this is how people are going to give. They already started with this course, BCom and BCom honors. What is the difference? Three years, four years. So people with the honors directly get into the research. Uh, here is one more example over here. Nobody would have thought of uh, doing a BSc research. People will always think in the terms of chemistry, BSc chemistry. Today, BSc research in chemistry. Every BSc has been converted into research degrees. Not a normal degree where you get a BSc degree and go. It's a research. People can do your research, continue the research once you get the degrees. So these, 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 there are a couple of universities started implementing that. It's not going to be in the near future. It's already started. Then I'm going to give you an armor case here. BSc, research in mathematics, economics. BSc in economics, that's a wonderful uh, you know, you know, induction program. People with the technology take finance, a multidisciplinary university. Here comes in another option, as already I've been discussed in NEP, which has started implemented in some private universities. Actually, it's not a private university. They, they started as a state university. Integrated MSc and PhD programs. You know, you already have a degree. You thought of doing a PhD in future, no need of waiting for the future, no need of doing an MPhil and all, directly enroll for an integrated MSc PhD program. You uh, MSc one year, PhD remaining three years. Suppose you don't want to continue, you break and come with your MSc at later stage, again you can continue your program. Wonderful. Now, all those things, it is, it is going to come under great learning platform. That means ODL. Not necessary. You have to go to uh, go to the place. There are uh, there are degrees. A certain degrees they're given on ODL platform where people can do it online. No, no need of moving out of it. Okay. Now here uh, there are uh, there are some more uh, no degrees like that. Now what I'm going to do uh, show you here is when it's going to be implemented. All those things are good, but when there is a timeline given by the implement for the implementation of NEP 2020. It's not going to be implemented overnight or for the next year. You know how when the complete program is going to be implemented, it's going to take uh, uh, nearly next 20 years. That is 240. The entire problem will be rolled out. So next 20 years, phase by phase, they are going to implement. Okay, people, I'll stop here with a couple of questions. Now, it's, this is important. See, where are you in this system? You people are doing your degree. Where are you in the system? In what way this is going to uh, help you or this is going to impact you? And let me tell you, you, you people are there in the middle of transformation. No way your school program, school re revamp program of NEP is going to help you. Or even in higher education system, you are already completed your uh, degree or in your college that you don't have, you don't have any choice or chance to get into the NEP because when it comes to higher education, it almost it takes uh, you know 2025 to get into this higher education you no know, reformation. For the next five years, you have to still stick into the old system. Having said about all this NEP, where where you you are. In between the transformation, so how, how, how it's going to help you? Let me tell you one thing. What way this NEP 20 is going to affect you people because you are there in your uh, no, uh, UG degree. No way you can take this NEP. One thing for sure. No way you can get into a higher education system in this NEP format. No. If that's the case, what, the, what impact I'm going to have? I'll tell you one thing. You are going to have a tough, very tough competition is following you. professional next 20, 30 years could travel. Hope people got it. They have been trained in a different environment. 
உங்களுக்கு பின்னால ஒரு ஃபோர் ஃபைவ் இயர்ஸ்க்கு வரப்போற ஒரு குரூப் வந்து வேற ஒரு என்விரான்மெண்ட்ல அவங்கள ட்ரெயின் பண்ணி வர்றாங்க நீங்க வேற ஒரு என்விரான்மெண்ட்ல ட்ரெயின் ஆகி போறீங்க ரெண்டு பேருமே ஒரு கட்டத்துல ப்ரொஃபஷனல் பிளேஸ்ல மீட் பண்ண வேண்டிய ஸ்டேஜ் வரும் அங்க யூ வில் பி டெஃபினட்லி சர்பாஸ்ட் ஃப்ரம் திஸ் பட் திஸ் குரூப் ஆஃப் பீப்புள் தேர் கோயிங் டு கம் பிகாஸ் தே ஆர் கம்ப்ளீட்லி அக்யூப் தே டாக் அபவுட் கிரிட்டிக்கல் திங்கிங் டிசிஷன் மேக்கிங் ஆல் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ஸ்டாப் பட் வி கம் வித் அ டிஃப்ரெண்ட் கேட்டகரி ஆஃப் நோ ரோட் லேர்னிங் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ரேங்க் மார்க் எல்லாம் ஓகே பட் வென் இட் கம்ஸ் டு த ப்ராப்ளம் சால்விங் வி ஸ்டாப் ஸோ ஹியர் it's a really an critical sit for you for the next 5 years 6 years la ungala ninga equip pannika vendiya kattayathil irkinga otherwise life fulla pinnala ungalku pinnala varavanga keela ninga vela seiyadhu kattaya vandru appo enna pannalam simple you have to develop yourself in a kind of a skill set what you love let me end up this thing by saying that in the anju varsha in the next 5 years ku ninga enna pannanonna ungalku enna pudichado ungalku enna varumo adhula expert aagunga kashta pattu padikiradhu mukkiyam illa enna padichala adha ishta pattu padikiradhu எக்ஸாம் காகவோ மார்க்குக்காகவோ உங்களுக்கு தயார் பண்ணிக்காம உங்களுக்கு பிடிச்ச ஒரு விஷயத்தையே உங்களுடைய ப்ரொஃபஷனா மாத்திங்க எக்ஸ்பர்ட் இன் தட் வென் தீஸ் பீப்புள் வித் இஸ் எனிபி பீப்புள் வென் தே கம் ட்ரெயின் அண்ட் கம் அண்ட் வென் யூ கைஸ் மீட் அட் ஒன் பர்டிகுலர் ஜங்ஷன் யூ கேன் சர்வை ஃபார் த நெக்ஸ்ட் நோ இவங்களுடைய நெக்ஸ்ட் ஆஃப் லைஃபுக்கு யூ கேன் ஹாவ் எ பியூட்டிஃபுல் சர்வேல் ப்ராசஸ் அதர்வைஸ் அந்த ஜென்ரேஷன் பிகாஸ் அவங்களுக்கு உங்களுக்கு ஒரு பெரிய கேப் கிடையாது maybe next 5 years la they are going to come <coughs> to your uh, professional uh, space and you are going to compete with those people they are going to come out with a you know, lot of you know or uh, uh, enriched and you know or uh, critical thinking problem solving skill oda vandu bayara or 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 full form a vandu nikka poranga that is important for you any if you ungalku endha vidathiliyum ungalude system ah adu touch pannadhukku vaippe kedai because it is going in a different track and you people are there in a different track but and the track la varavanga kuda dhaan neenga nichum life travel panna vendiyad irukum so make sure that you equip yourself uh with that i'll just move on to my last slide maybe i have lot of slides to share with because it's not one hour program for me so what i'll do is i'll just there are a lot of benefits of course if possible i'll just share the slides at later stage a tropium uh, most important part is your questions any specific question you can ask for yourself even at the faculty we, they, we have a separate uh, no module for the faculties because they are going to face a different issues with this nep of course they cannot get into this nep system but for them again it's a survival process in the 80s kids 90s kids nu solra mari in the 2020s 20 2000 kids ku in the nep it's going to give a big challenge for their career and survival because the next generation is going to come completely equipped industries will prefer those people not you so it's it's the high time for you to identify your capacity and build your capacity and be ready to face those challenges with that i stop i think uh, uh, i'm taking an extra time madam i'll move on i'll give it to you yes uh, thank you sir uh, very energetic and very informative uh, session uh, participants if you have any uh, questions you can raise your question madam a uh, little bit louder enak chera kekkleya illa enak mic problem can you hear me now sir yes yes please this yes, participants if you have any questions you can ask now either you can post it in chat box or you or you can unmute yourself and talk yeah any any specific questions my if you want you can ask me uh, for the next 5 uh, 10 minutes i can love to spend over here because uh, 
this one is a completely a, a kind of a policy which is not going to directly affect you but it's going to have a very important impact in your uh, in your career sir yes ma'am there are some questions uh, which have uh, been coming uh, yeah yeah can can you read out those questions because yes. i couldn't able to see yeah uh, will nep be effect effective in india hmm. and then uh, yes my it is completely it is meant to only for the indian education system india ka kada ad it's a nep 2020 is a indian policy it is only for our indian uh, uh, students and education system it's nothing to do with the foreign but one thing i just want to say it's open now because in the next in the sale na ko solirpa it is open now future like lot of foreign university is going to come and start their own institutions here either they are going to have a tie up or they are going to have their own you know colleges here like already mit harvard and other institutions australian and you know uh, canadian universities have started their uh, Uh, institutions campuses over here a very future like there's going to be a lot of you know foreign uh, collaborations and institutions they're going to do have their campuses here but definitely there's going to have a lot of impact as i said next is why removal of mphil mphil is is a kind of uh, yeah, oh, 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 it's a program which is you know solona tham you know solona the kalavadiyana program uh how to say how to say expire you can have expedited mudichu அது ஏற்கனவே பத்து வருஷத்துக்கு முன்னாலே எக்ஸ்பெர்டேட் முடிஞ்சிச்சு அது தெரியாம நிறைய பேர் ஜாயின் பண்ணி இருக்காங்க ஏன்னா எம்பில் தே ஆர் நாட் கோயிங் டு கன்சிடர் ஃபார் ஏ அப்பாயின்மெண்ட் தே ஆர் வெரி கிளியர் தட் தே ஆர் கன்ஃபார்ம் ஃபார் அப்பாயின்மெண்ட் எம்பில் முடிச்சா ஒரு டைம்ல பிஹெச்டி அட்மிஷன் கொடுத்தாங்க இப்ப அதுவும் கிடையாது ஃபார் தட் பீப்புள் ஹேவ் டு கிளியர் நெட்ன்ற மாதிரி கொண்டு வந்துட்டாங்க ஃபார் தே ஆர் ஃபார் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் ஸ்டாப் ஸோ நோவே இட்ஸ் கோயிங் டு ஹெல்ப்ஃபுல் என்ன பேருக்கு பின்னால போட்டுக்கணும்ன்ற ஒரு மயக்கத்துல தான் ஒரு பல கடந்த ஒரு பதினஞ்சு வருஷமாவே அதை பண்ணியிருந்தாங்க தட் பர்டிகுலர் டிகிரி இஸ் ஹஸ் பின் எக்ஸ்பயர் ஏற்கனவே அது எக்ஸ்பயர் ஆகி டிகிரி அது Uh, next is what will be the adaptation level by indian universities on this new educational policy it's a do or die it's a, it's a question of survival if you adapt you can survive otherwise you have to close down you have no other choice and adaptation should also be you know you know in a, in a kind of you know close monitoring next to 5 years la i just already show you and shown you example of shivnadar university they are they started the university completely on that particular structure it's not adapt they created their own in their university on that structure so for other university it's going to be a big challenge and you know a threat this kind of universities are coming where are very good it's a it's a, it's a kind of a, a survival process if they want to survey they have to adapt that's my next question uh changes in the educational policy due to covid 19 uh education policy change la kedaidha covid 19 la vandu it is uh, inevitable thavirka mudiyadhu change e kedaidhu vera valiye kedaidhu so today uh, say for example let me tell you one thing in the nep policy uh, enroll aagrathukku munnaliye people in 8 2018 and 19 there will be too much of talk people talk talk about the fifth standard ko or entrance exam vekkanonanga comma sorry public exam vekkanonanga eighth standard ko or public exam vekkanonanga 11th standard ko already or public exam 10th ko public exam 12th ko public exam the school life la naal level la they used to have this public exam konja nanjama pesanaanga iniki vekkavendi public exam e close pannittu poga povichichu it's something like uh, you know man proposes god disposes pesanavanga la iniki vera valiye illa ellathey moodi to poitanga so it is an inevitable situation and you have to undergo this it's you have you have no other choice it's not a, your choice you have to follow the system next one yes sir that's it sir sir i have a question any, any sir questions? yes yes ma'am please uh, sir in what way we can train our students uh, to compete with the future generation uh, when they study under uh, nep i don't know whether uh, you take it in a right sense or not i'll tell you if a student train pandra situation la namba illa teachers modala train aaganum adapt aaganum avangalukku indha situation adapt aana piragu dhaan indha students train pandradhukku varum yena students pass out poi poidaporam ipo current batch neenga handle pandra oru 3 4 varsham pasanga veliya poidaporanga 
அடுத்த ஒரு அஞ்சாறு வருஷம் கழிச்சு நீங்க வரப்போற ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் ட்ரெயின் பண்றதுக்கு நம்மளே எக்யூப்பா கிடையாது As I told you before, as what the system says is, you are not supposed to ask a question which is already asked. One, two, the what, where, when kind of a question. I don't know whether people know about this BTL method, Bloom's taxonomy. Only analytical kind of a question should be asked. If you are creative, think, do a lot of analysis, come out with your own discovery method. If you don't have any questions, you don't have any questions. It's an information which is already there. After that, faculties have to be trained. Now, coming back to the students, students are going to be trained. இன்னைக்கு அவங்களுக்கு இன்னைக்கு என்னைக்கு ட்ரெயின் ஆகுறது அடுத்தது இருக்கிற சிஸ்டம்லயே இன்னைக்கு அவங்க அவுட் ஆஃப் சிஸ்டம்ல போயின்னு இருக்காங்க வெரி அன்பார்ச்சுனேட் தட் இந்த கரண்ட் த்ரீ இயர்ஸ் அதாவது இன்னைக்கு இந்த வருஷம் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் இயர் படிக்கிற பசங்க செகண்ட் இயர் படிக்கிற பசங்க தேர்ட் இயர் படிக்கிற பசங்க லாஸ்ட் இயர் செகண்ட் இயர் படிச்ச பசங்க இல்ல இந்த வருஷம் செகண்ட் இயர் படிச்ச பசங்க தேர்ட் இயர் இந்த டூ தௌசண்ட் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி டூ டுவெண்ட்டி ஒன் டுவெண்ட்டி டூ இந்த மூணு வருஷத்துல கிராஸ் பண்ற ஒவ்வொரு ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸும் industry is going to give them a chapa they are covid batches avangalukku they are not even uh, up to the par of the normal regular stream nep vittuduvom nammalku munnala kira challenge irukkira students ah palaya padi train pandrathukku ipo vali kaanum avanga enna panna porom one after covid uh, everything is over you go into a normal that normal is going to be a new normal let me tell you you are not going to face the system as you faced two years back new normal varumodho idhe mari neenga class edukka poradhu kediyadhu idhe mari class nadakka poradhu kediyadhu reason is the university the university already getting into those kind of an experiments we, move, we are going to go for blended learning as well as flipped class classrooms idhu rendum is going to dominate what do you mean by blended learning i'll tell you 50% will be there in the classroom session and 50% you already been trained in your online platform that's going to continue flip classroom the other side round students are going to come to the stage and you are going to go and observe what they do that's going to happen mari nariya vishayangal varapodu adukku namba modala thayarikkanum payasangalukku vandu it's a short people who are going to take up this teaching profession they have a different challenges people who are going to go for industry ipothiki avanga industry eppadi avanga treat panna poranga theriyala ana future la avanga ulla pona perukudo future la avangalukku pinnala vara batches is going to have a go full equipped a varaporaanga provided these neps are properly implemented appdi nerkumoda avangalukku irukkira challenge survival process ivunga kuda potti podana avanga avangala develop pannikana avangala develop panna nendradhu enna pananona and the competencies ஒவ்வொருத்தருக்கும் ஒரு திறமை இருக்கும் நம்மளுக்கு பிடிக்காத விஷயம் வராத விஷயம் விட்டுவோம் ஆனா வர விஷயத்த இன்னும் ரோல் you are going to go into the kind of a system called bioinformatics idu mari vishayangal pharmaceutical industry lot of things are going to come adu edhula ungalku vande or eedu paadu irukko adhula focus pannunga result immediate ah varadhu over the period of time you become an expert and then you 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 are going to set up the rules for that particular area kind of anything else i hope you i answered your question but you know எக்ஸாக்டா நீங்க இப்ப இதுதான் மெத்தட் என் பசங்களை ட்ரெயின் பண்ணணும் அப்படின்னா இப்போத்துக்கு அது வந்து இட்ஸ் ஹாவ் எனி அதர் சாய்ஸ் தேங்க் யூ சார் பார்ட்டிசிபன்ஸ் யூ ஹாவ் எனி கொஸ்டின்ஸ் டு பி ஆஸ்ட் யா ஐ சோ ஒன் ஹேண்ட் வாஸ் நோ ரைசிங் yeah girls any 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 specific questions <coughs> i saw a lot of you no know, commerce uh, students were there they were nameless la pata for you i just give you one simple simple suggestion there are a lot of options for you know uh, accounting domain ungalku the bcom eduthadhu mcom ponna avashyame kediyad you have lot of options already available in our own education system they already follow this nep kind of uh, 
thing like you know it can be a you know a chartered accountant it can be a management accountant it can be any any kind of you know a professional bodies are there you you keep yourself and one more thing let me tell you one thing don't always think in one particular domain you have a, a big option for uh, civil services adu yaarume perusa edukkiradhu illa adanalada than vandu pathinga nammude and important mukhyamana and the decision making stuff ellame moves towards a professional education and i think administration level la especially uh, civil services la pala pathinga people don't opt for it you have lot of options click up those kind of courses that already follow nep formats that that that's going to help you a lot uh, let me tell you Yeah. Any, any, any other questions? So you now, because next five minutes I can stay here. Please ask any, any questions you may have. I love to answer. Yeah. Yeah. Participants, any questions? Yes. Uh, yes, Kritika. Yes, ma'am. Yes, you can proceed, ma. Okay, ma. Thank you so much, sir. That was really an informative and interesting session. I'm sure that all the participants have gathered more information. If there's beginning, there will also be an end. Now I call Miss Harika to propose the vote of thanks. Thank you, Kritika. Warm evening to everyone. It gives me immense pleasure in delivering the vote of thanks in this occasion. For most, I thank God for making this event successful. I especially thank our resource person, Dr. C. V. Suresh Babu sir, for accepting our invitation and spending this valuable time. Thank you, sir. I thank A. J. Unlimited for providing Zoom platform. I would thank our management correspondent, Sri Guhilam Ramesh sir, Principal Dr. T. Mohan Sri ma'am. Vice Principal Dr. T. B. Vanita, ma'am. Vice Principal Ac Academist M. V. Napinai, ma'am, for their continuous support in all our initiatives. I extend my thanks to Faculty Coordinator Dr. G. Manita, ma'am, and Nitisha, ma'am, for encouraging. As no program can complete with a single person, so I extend my big thanks to all the participants for their active participation. Thank you, one and all. thank you ma thanks for this wonderful opportunity it's a long term i've been there in this kind of a platform actually i don't uh, believe in as online platform but still uh, i have to change myself na enika oru naal ella nalla povom na appo vende ellare nerla paapom appadina adu nalla pora mari theriyala so what i have to do is i have to change myself and uh, take this uh, whatever the opportunity is given to me to meet you people thank you very much thank you so much sir uh, it was very nice thank you for accepting our invitation we have a positive feedback in the chat box stating excellent session uh, nice, uh, nice uh, sessions and eye opener for uh, national education policy uh, so we are happy to share that uh, with you and we hope so for the further endeavor thank you further uh, webinar with you sir thank you sure ma'am thank you participants you can uh, fill the feedback form thank you sir madam sir madam sir i leave or what yes sir yes sir okay thank you thank you sir thank you, thank you sir participants you can fill the feedback form and leave the session